Hey everybody, it's Peter and I'm here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals and we are going to compare the Nissan Frontier, this 2022 model, with the Toyota Tacoma, also a 2022 model, both within about a thousand kilometers of each other, both like 6,000, 5,000 ish kilometers, so both virtually new and priced identically. So, which one's better for you? Hopefully that's what we're going to determine. Now, you've probably already read the specs about horsepower, fuel efficiency, those kinds of things. This one happens to have a manual transmission. This one happens to have an automatic transmission. There will be some differences between these vehicles. In this review, what we're going to do is go over some of the practical details about these vehicles. Rear seat space, storage areas, some of the bed comparisons, and I'm going to give you some of the things that don't show up in the spec sheet. So if that's the type of review that matters to you, do me a favor, I'm trying to grow my channel, subscribe to the channel, and we're gonna talk about all kinds of things that they're not showing you in the other reviews. Let's get going. Now the Tacoma's been around for a while. It's been a game changer, it's been the leader in the industry, and it's no doubt that Nissan was ch challenging the Tacoma, that they're basically going after that vehicle. So when Chevrolet introduces their new Canyon Colorado, GM introduces their new Canyon Colorado, they're really trying to make a smaller version of their own vehicles. When Nissan's coming out with a mid-sized truck, they are going after the Tacoma. And you can really sort of see and feel that. And to be fair, this truck impressed me. It's in a lot of objectively ways, better than the Tacoma. It's got surround view monitors here, so you've got that 360 camera bird's eye view. The Tacoma doesn't have that. You've got some neat features in here that the Tacoma doesn't have, but the Tacoma is still the leader. And what I love about working with the inventory here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals is you can compare between brands at the same dealer, work with the same sales team, and they don't care which one you buy. It doesn't really matter to them. So they're gonna work with you to find the best vehicle for you, and that's what this video is all about. So let's take a closer look at the Frontier to start off, and then we'll go over and compare some of those aspects to the Tacoma. So if we're gonna talk trucks, we have to talk tr pickup truck beds. And when you look at the average Tacoma, You've got pretty much rails in every one, and you've got sort of the shallow bed. This one has the bed mat in here and the uh, liner as well. So this is a more of a plastic type liner, resin type liner. Over here, it is an option to get a spray and liner in this in the Frontier. This one doesn't have it. Of course, we can do that for you here at the dealer. One thing you're going to notice, both of these vehicles have these soft open tailgate, and you can see that comes down nice and easy. I will say that the weight of this to close is lighter than the weight of the Tacoma. So it comes down both soft open, soft uh, sort of soft open, soft close, I guess. Uh, but then again, same track system in here, basically identical. You do have LED lights here in the Frontier. You have tie downs that are permanent, those black tie downs there in the center of your screen, as well as the adjustable ones all around. And both vehicles have a plug and the plug on these is both higher rated than a lot of your typical SUVs. So not quite a full household plug, but certainly something you can use for a lot more than just your typical, um, you know, typical, you know, laptop charging, that kind of thing. You can power some tools off of these things. You can see that there. Tacoma does have a little bit of a space there. I don't see that in the Frontier. I would say the Frontier bed to me looks a little deeper, but again, you guys can check out the specs exactly. These two don't quite line up. The Frontier is about a half an inch, uh, higher uh, there, but that again could be the way we're parked. It could be the um, difference. And really, if that makes any difference to you, it's probably not gonna make a whole lot of difference to the average buyer. Now I wanna show you some differences on the inside, practically speaking. So we're actually gonna start with the rear seat before we go to the front seat. Both these vehicles do have square door openings the entire way here, so that kind of makes sense for the body style. We're going to start with the Frontier, which brags about under-seat storage in their uh, website and other information, and you do absolutely have some under-seat storage. You can lift this lever up right there. I'm going to do some poor camera work while I hold that for a second and lift that seat up. Now what that does is the back actually collapses in because it's on a comfortable angle, it collapses in, it holds that up. There's a little bit of storage here, there's more on that other side. It's not a ton, but if you compare it to something like Tacoma, we'll go on the same 60-40 split. They do the 60-40 split on the same side, so we'll go driver's side Tacoma here. And same type of situation here, you have, if I can get to it, a 
behind seat storage. Now this one's not folding all the way down just because I have the headrest in the way and the driver's position uh, there, but you do have a storage space there that is probably similar size, but it's on the back of the vehicle, not underneath. So it just uh, both give you slight bit of storage, but not a lot. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hop in the Tacoma. We're gonna show you headroom, legroom, uh, with me sitting behind myself comfortably, and we'll do the same thing in the Frontier. All right, mid-sized trucks, they're kind of compromised trucks. They're not at all full-size trucks where you have that massive rear seat, but as a six-footer, the roof is kind of carved out here. I do fit, I do have headroom in the Tacoma here. Uh, you can see the sunroof there. We'll have the sunroof again in the uh, Frontier as well. Down here on my legs area, I do have a little bit of a rise to my legs here. They're supported till about here, and then I rise up there. My toes are underneath the seat, but just my toes. If you're wearing work boots, they wouldn't slide underneath this seat. And knee room is okay. So can I ride back here for a long time? Yeah, I probably could. Is it as comfortable as some SUVs? Probably not for a six footer. If you're a little bit smaller than me, should be, quite, be able to get quite comfortable back here. All right, now we're back in the Frontier. And again, because this was really designed to take on the Tacoma, you have a lot of similarities here. We've got that sunroof out front here on this particular model. Now, in this case, that sort of rise above my head, I would like it to be a little bit more forward because if I lean a little forward, I'm pretty much on the ceiling. But if I sit back, I'm comfortable. And really, that's probably where I'm going to be sitting. It's very good back here. Coming back to my legs, very similar to the Tacoma as well. I'm kind of half supported. The seats feel maybe a tiny bit shorter here, but I'm not so sure. The support feels the same. And I will say that a little bit extra knee room is here for when I'm comfortable in this seat. So this is why it's important to not just look at the specs. Sometimes where you're comfortable in the seat based on how high or low the seat is uh, can also determine where you position that seat. And in my case, with me sitting in the driver's seat, I do have a little bit more leg room back here. I will say as well that the Frontier does have an armrest here with cup holders, whereas the Tacoma that we're looking at today had no armrest back there. It had leather, this one has cloth, uh, all of that is good. Let me show you one more thing. This is the center armrest between the driver and passenger seat, and you do have a USB-C and a USB, or sorry, yeah, USB-C and USB-A, and you have that extra uh, household style plug right there. You're not seeing vents here, but I did check the specs. There are some vents underneath the seats on this uh, vehicle as well, so you are getting some air to the back here, but it's coming from underneath the seat, which is good for heat. I will say that uh, I didn't show you a picture of my Tacoma, the Tacoma. The Tacoma, my toes were underneath. This one I can slide a little bit more underneath. So if you had work boots, you might be able to fit a little extra space in your toes in the Frontier compared to the Tacoma. Sitting in the driver's area of the Tacoma, you do have a powered seat with lumbar adjustment. Again, these ones happen to be leather seats. And of course that uh, varies. Switch gear over here, you have a few less buttons than you're gonna see in the Frontier, but a lot of actually similar buttons. This one's a manual transmission, so it has that clutch uh, start cancel, which is just really another video as well. You can sort of start this without having to touch the clutch if you're off-roading. Um, you do have lights in the top of the bed, of course, but I didn't see any lights in the side of the bed. I'll double check, no. So again, that uh, brake light up top gives you that light up top, just like the picture's showing but not the um, bed lights underneath the bed cover if you had that. Sitting in the Tacoma, you have a nice display screen here. This one is a keyed car. I should show you the keys. Actually, let's just quickly show you the key while we're here. There's what the key looks like. Because it's a keyed car, you uh, have a key and a uh, fob all in one. The Frontier is a keyless entry on the model we're looking at today. I'm sure that this car is available. This Tacoma is also available like that. In here, you have a nice display screen. Let's just turn that stereo down for a second here. Nice display screen, but it's dated. So it's a check charging system simply because I'm not running the vehicle. Let's start it up here. There we go. All right, we'll start it up there. So again, Tacoma comes to life there. Again, nice display screen, good information in here. It's going to be a little bit less impressive than the Frontier, which is designed to obviously attack this and bigger screens are what they do more and more. So I'm just trying to shield the sun there. Over here, you have a nice size display screen, probably about seven inches or so. There is some glare that you're seeing on camera. I am in a very bright uh, filming area. There's less glare on in person than in camera, but there is still some glare. Again, it's just the angle that I'm filming this. I probably should have moved the vehicles around. You do have navigation in here. You do have um, uh, all the standard uh, AM, FM, probably satellite as well. Let's just see if we go to the audio system. Uh, AM, FM, let's see what we got. 
AM, FM, and satellite radio, of course, and Bluetooth. Now, I believe that Toyotas now come with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in them, so this one should have that as well. Down here, more of an automatic temperature control with the temperatures above there. And again, switch gear down here as well. So uh, blind spot monitoring on the left, and you've got the rear powered window, which I quite like. I don't believe it's powered in the, in the Frontier. We'll double check that. USB ports, or sorry, um, 12 volt port there, but I don't see any USB ports up in this area. And this, I don't believe, oh, I could be wrong. That is a wireless charge pad. Okay, so we do a wireless charge pad there as well, which is nice to have for your phone. This one happens to be manual transmission. It's a six speed manual transmission. You can uh, do what you want with that. Heated seats, of course, are available, right? Oop, looking through the camera, there we go, up through here. So I'm just trying to shield that there. So heated seats, very nice cabin here, but let's be honest. It is a little dated. This is not a uh, vehicle that is up to date with modern SUV standards, but of course, that's kind of what the Tacoma is. It's very reliable, it's done well, it holds its resale value very well. People like this truck as it is, so they don't mess with it a whole lot. Showing you the steering wheel controls here. Your cruise control is a little stock down there. It actually works, works very well. Toyota's been doing this for a long time. You've got your menu controls here, which look a little confusing, but they're pretty easy to understand once you get used to owning this truck. Audio controls and Bluetooth right over there. Let's go take a look at the Frontier. Right away, you notice the Frontier is dressed up with some accents. That's the trim level here. You've got some nice orange metallic looking, but obviously plastic accents there. One thing you do have is a powered seat, but no power lumbar adjustment like you had in the Tacoma. Now for me, even though I've got a funny back, I find these seats to be as comfortable, maybe even more comfortable. Uh, it's kind of very similar in there. Uh, so lumbar support for me wasn't an issue. Uh, but it might be for you, and that's something to keep in mind that this one doesn't seem to have that there. We talked about the controls on the side here, so you've got a lot more here. Your tow mode over here. Now, again, the other one being a manual transmission probably doesn't have a tow mode. You've got a number of things. There's your uh, turning on your uh, plug in the back, cargo lamps. And, of course, the cargo lamps here can be set to under your tonneau cover because they are under your tonneau cover. You can lock your rear differential there on this Pro 4X model. Jumping inside here, let's just turn this car on as well. This one's not facing the sun, so the glare comparison, uh, it's just really the angle of the two filming here. Turn the vehicle on, there is again some glare. Again, you always see more glare on a camera than you do in actual real life in person. So um, what I like about this is you have a larger display screen in the center. It does look a little more modern, although to be fair, again, not as modern as some modern SUVs. You are still having that truck kind of feel. One thing that's confusing to me that'll take a while to get used to is, this is your menu that goes side to side in here. You've got your off-road menus here. So we'll show you this just to get to one more second. Um, there's fuel economy that's of this car. Don't worry about fuel economy at a dealership level. They can always change traffic signs, lots of stuff in here. So I kind of like what you've got in here. Um, but one thing that's confusing to me is when you get to the settings menu, this here goes up and down through the settings menu. So you can see I'm moving up and down through the settings menu. When you're on any other screen, so let's go back to this screen. When I go up and down over here with that same menu there, you are now controlling the channel. So I'm changing the same thing there. There's my channel, which is a little bit confusing for me because it'll depend on what menu you're on uh, to have this controller over here. So a little bit different way of doing things, but again, once you own the vehicle, probably not a big deal. Uh, they do have a little bit of a Ford F-150 dip in the windshield here. Uh, that does give you pretty good visibility out the mirrors. Let's take a look at this screen. Again, when we're talking about a little bit more modern look, this is absolutely more modern. This is uh, a much larger screen, about a nine inch screen, I believe uh, I was told. So again, a lot of the same things, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay in here, um, clearer, brighter. This is more modern in every single way. Uh, when you come to the menu here, you can do all kinds of different things. If we wanna go just to our audio, we can go to that. If we wanna go just to our navigation, our maps, we got that. So uh, showing darker trim, it can show different things. And you've got good information in the, um, in the uh, menu system there. Of course, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Coming down here again, very similar. You've got a single display screen here for just your climate control and some extra buttons down here. One of the things both these vehicles do right is um, when you set the um, remote start, for instance, on this vehicle, you can uh, leave this button pressed in. Some vehicles, you can't leave that pressed in, so you can, of course, leave that heated seat on. Heated seats warm up very quickly in here, and I think that's partly just because it's a cloth seat. You also have heated steering wheel in here. I did not see that in the Tacoma, although I could see, that could be different. Uh, I like to see USB-C and USB-A ports. I'd like to see a few more of those, but they do have them in here. Over here, this is just a storage area, and you're saying, hey, what about my uh, wireless phone charger? Well, that's back here. Plug it in there. This little orange light comes on to tell you that it is charging. Works very well as well. To be honest, I like the layout of this a little bit better. It's a little bit cleaner. It does show a more modern refresh uh, compared to the Tacoma. You have a 12 
volt port there. You also have a 12 volt port in your armrest here. Uh, I would have liked to see that USB and USB-C. I feel like that's the sort of the future. And that would also allow you to connect to Android Auto Apple CarPlay through that instead of, or through the armrest instead. Storage area up there as well. Let's flip around. Overall, I'm not sure if the view looks the same as the Tacoma, but it certainly feels very similar to the Tacoma here. You've got the sunroof there as well. Uh, I believe that rear window is manual, like we mentioned, but of course the powered sunroof uh, there as well. And of course, sunglass holders. I'm going to be honest, the Tacoma speaks to me as a vehicle. I've always kind of thought it's a cool vehicle. It is the one that everybody seems to want. Having done this review and having been, you know, most of the way through this review, the Frontier would be my choice on this lot today. I just, I am impressed with Nissan's done with it. They've got good safety features. The feel is still very good. Uh, it feels like that traditional truck. They don't try to go like something like the Hyundai Santa Cruz, which is very modern SUV. Like this still feels like a truck. I think truck people will be happy with this. Um, but I would say in this uh, comparison for me, the Frontier would win. Maybe you're different. Let's talk about that. So one of my favorite things about doing auto reviews is you kind of realize that the specs don't matter as much as you think they do. And if you're like me, sometimes it's just sitting in a car, feeling how it feels, and you like one better. I've always liked the Tacoma. I've never bought one. I actually had a Colorado in the past. It, to me, was a better value. And then in this case, the Frontier, I just figured I'd like the Tacoma better. We have a number of Tacomas here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals right now. You can certainly, if this isn't the model you want, there's other uh, variants that you can look for. Right now we only have the one uh, Nissan Frontier, but I'm sure we'll have more coming through. But what's interesting to me is when you sit in the vehicle and you see how it feels, sometimes those practical differences just make it better for you or better for your lifestyle at that point. So. If you wanna know more about these vehicles, I'm gonna to continue to come back to these vehicles. We're always gonna do a regular pickup truck, vehicle, all kinds of reviews. And I hope you subscribe to this channel. Let's start the conversation. What do you wanna know more about this Nissan? What do you wanna know more about the Tacomas? What are the other videos not showing you? Those are the things you can let me know and I'll come back to them so that we can create better videos for you. We can create a community here where we're helping people out to figure out what vehicle is best for them. Now. Like I said, sometimes you just gotta sit in them to know what's better. If you're in, Mar in the Maritimes, in Fredericton, in New Brunswick, swing on down to Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals. You can sit in them yourselves. You can take them for a test drive. You can try them out. And again, you can come to a dealership where they don't care if you buy the Tacoma or the Frontier. They just wanna help you find the best vehicle for you. They are Canada's huggable car dealer. They are absolutely incredible when they talk about caring about their customer. They really mean it. It's an awesome place to be. I wanna thank them for giving me access to their vehicles and we'll see you in the next one.